my Lord, so like other noble lords that have spoken, can I start by thanking the noble lord, Lord Avery, for putting this question down for debate today. It is a most timely discussion. As we've heard this afternoon, chance repair liability derives from the disposal of church lands following the Reformation. The rector had the obligation for the repair and upkeep of the church, and they're able to raise sums of money, tithes, uh, from parishioners. After the Reformation, much church land was passed to lay landowners, but the liability of upkeep remained, and this, my lords, is the problem in effect. The lay landowner, with the liability to pay for chance repair, has no means to cover the costs. Some progress has been made uh, to deal with this anomaly, most recently in 2003, when the then Labour government changed the law, as other nobles were referred to, so that after the uh, 30 of October 2013, where interest had not been noted at the land registry, any purchase of the land to which the liability had previously attached would not be subject to it, though the current owners in such cases would remain liable. That, my lords, is some progress, but we need to go much, much further than this. We are fortunate in this country to have beautiful buildings of all ages and types. They tell the story of our history and they should be preserved. Our system of listed buildings helps protect them. I noted that the Church of England is responsible for maintaining 45% of the grade one listed buildings in the country and that the majority of all parish churches are grade two or higher. And the Right Reverend Prelude Richard Darby made reference to this, to this obligation in his contribution to the debate. So we have to find another way to fund the upkeep of these buildings and phase out the chance of repair liability, particularly for individuals. Looking at the Warbank case, as referred to by the noble Lord Lord Avery, which went all the way to your Lordship's house, which found against the Warbanks and left them with a repair bill which amounted to £250,000, including the VAT, and legal fees of £200,000, you can have every sympathy with individuals who find themselves with chance or repair liability claims served upon them and illustrates how unsatisfactory the present position is. The case established that chance repair liability, although ancient, is an enforceable part of the law of the land of England and Wales, whereby property owners can be compelled to pay for repairs to the chance of a church. The noble Lord Lord Avery has introduced a private member's bill into the House of Lords on the 14th of July 2014, the effect of which, on becoming law, would be to abolish liability on lay rectors for chance of repair. I do not think, with so few days left in this Parliament before it's dissolved at the end of March, that it's going to make much progress, as the noble Lord himself referred to. I think what the Bill is proposing to do is in the right direction, but I think to be to make real progress in the next Parliament, there also have to be provisions to identify replacement funding, um, where that, that's where the Government comes in. In a debate in the other place on the 17th of October 2012, Helen Grant, in responding to the debate on Chancellor Repair, did not offer much comfort and generally took the view that provisions in place as a result of the 2002 Act have achieved a better balance and we're not persuaded of the need for change. I would contend that the Government need to move on from that position and seek to find a lasting solution. Not to do so would continue to make certain properties unsaleable, uh, bringing blight and distress to people, and that cannot be right. I hope the noble Lord, Lord Ashton of Hyde, when he responds to the debate, will be able to give a commitment that the Government do recognise that there is a real issue here that needs to be addressed. That abolishing the liability is in its entirety, or at least for private individuals, is long overdue, and they will work with the noble Lord, Lord Avery, and the Church of England to enable the noble Lords to bring forward another bill in the early part of the next Parliament that resolves the question finally, and also provides a mechanism for replacement funding to be identified. That could just be the Government ensuring that the liability, when the liability is removed, the Church of England will be able to apply, apply for other funding streams. If the Government committed themselves to work with the noble Lord Labour and the Church of England in a similar way they worked with the noble Lord Lord Naseby on the Deferred Shares Bill, which, which, which they could actually make much progress here and also much credit to the, to the Government. The noble Lord Lord Hyde of Ashton has heard the Right Reverend Prelate, the Bishop of Derby, say that the Church of England has wanted to get rid of this provision themselves. So I hope the noble Lord will take up my suggestion and to work to resolve this. And I hope he does not stand up and tell, tell the Grand Committee that the Government are going to keep the matter under review. Because we all know that. That means the Government has got absolutely nothing about it at all. They're not accepting this case.